just regular crazy. There's the picture, the autograph pen, the plea for Mariah to come. Find us for me, please. Come to the wherever we're at. I'm sure she's on her way. Then there's the sudden seizure-like outburst. And then right back into the conversation, which inevitably leads into wholesale groveling. Please, 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 I'm begging you, please. Come on. Criminally insane, insane. And now we're on to J-Lo. J-Lo all the way, baby. We Actually, not yet. <laughs> Look who's back. She's focused, she's enthusiastic. J-Lo can't sing. She's fanatical. She's the red carpet's craziest fan. Hi. Oh my God, I'm laughing at the background. <laughs> Are you okay with it? Yeah, I know, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted fine. to do something festive, at least so people could see you. That's really sweet. <laughs> so let me just give you a quick intro about myself. I was a sophomore in high school and Mariah's first album came out. So I'm going to be 46 next month. So I've been a fan for 30 years straight. So we're um, about the same age. Wait, you're going to be how old? 46. No way. That's why. What? You look so good. <laughs> what is your secret? I don't know. I don't talk very much, so maybe that's it. My face doesn't get a lot of muscle. No, that's not true, because if that's the case, then I'd look really old. <laughs> <laughs> so I first saw Mariah at the butterfly signing in New York City in 1997. So I've now seen her a total of 52 times. So that's my Mariah Lamb history. What is yours? Well, I've been a fan since 91 when I was still in elementary school. I remember the first time I heard her song, we were in my mom's car and they played her. And I was like, oh my God, mom, I love her. I love her voice. I don't even know what she looks like, but I'm going to be her number one fan. I just, I love her. I want everything that has to do with this girl right now. So I had to go get the cassette tape. I remember when uh, the Dream Lover video came out, I went out and bought Pumas. <laughs> I cut I cut my jean shorts up and got a flannel. Did you roll around in a field? Anytime I found flowers, I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your iconic moment, because this is a truly legendary moment, being known as the J-Lo Can't Sing Girl. This Awards. was in Pasadena at yeah. the Soul Train Music Awards in 03. And then VH1 was there. They were doing a show called Red Hot Red Carpet, The Craziest Fans. What they were doing was going to different places where they knew there were going to be fanatics. You know, find somebody who was a fanatic, videotape them in their natural element. <laughs> That's my natural element right there. That face right there. And <laughs> all I knew is that Mariah was going to be in that building and I didn't have a ticket. And I wanted everybody around me to know she's what's up. So... <laughs> When the cameras came by and they're like, okay, who are you guys all here to see? And I, I was the only one there with my LP screaming for her. People were like, oh my God, look at this girl. They were just like, oh my God, she's so fun. Is, is she okay? I mean... <laughs> So then they asked me, you know, I was kind of explaining to them, yes, I'm a Mariah fan. I love her so much. And they go on to the, that girl that was right next to me. Now, her. <laughs> She's so sweet. They made it look like they went on to her right away, but they didn't. They knew Mariah and J-Lo have that history. They asked, is anybody here a J-Lo fan? Nobody answered, right? Uh, J-Lo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. So then all of a sudden, that sweet girl, she was like, well, I like her. I'll do it. <laughs> she was so soft-spoken, right? Total opposite of me. I just remember telling her, really? And then <laughs> let us know how you feel about J-Lo. I was like, oh, no, she's not going to waste yeah, She's like any J-Lo time. all the way. Sorry, girl, you're really sweet, but that's not going to happen. Not on camera while I'm around. Maybe about five minutes later, they came back to me. Then the producer from VH1 was like, we just fell in love with you so much that we just got 30 tickets to go ahead and come in. You'll be seated with the media and radio. I'm like, oh my God. So of course I was like going ballistic. I couldn't believe it. He said, I'm gonna go ahead and get a police escort so that they can escort you to pick up 30 of the Mariah fanatics. They were calling them fanatics. And I had to correct him. I said, we're actually lambs. Let's just clear that up right now. <laughs> And he was like, okay, you can pick your lambs and then gather the herd and we'll come in this way, right? So then everybody was like, I want, and I even let the J-Lo girl come in because she was sweet, right? And it's not her fault. Yeah. So 
So nobody knows this either. So when JLo was going up to the podium to say something and it was so quiet, I said that line again. JLo can't sing! Stop. While she was there. And I know she heard. Everybody heard. And she kind of like turned her head, but she kept on talking because you could tell. I know she felt embarrassed. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, God, I really just did that. Yes. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> now let me clear one more thing up because a lot of people think that I hate Jennifer Lopez, but actually I don't. I just really don't think she knows how to sing very well. She's an amazing dancer and fashionista. I love a lot of her movies. She really makes me laugh. She, but I really think she should just leave the singing to, you know, Ashanti or, you know, anybody else. But. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's just like she compared really to so Mariah. Really. It's like you can't sing. There's no comparison there. I mean, they're just on different planets. Mariah's on a whole nother level. That's what I believe. God gives us all certain talents and certain gifts. And when he made Mariah, he was just like, I'm in such a good mood. You get this and that and this and that and this and that and all of this and that. Yes. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like you said, you never ended up seeing Mariah outside that day, correct? I did not get to see her that day. At what point did you find out that this aired and that you were on TV? My cousin, she calls me freaking out. And I'm like, what is wrong with you, girl? <laughs> um, and she's like, oh my God you're on tv i was like i am not yes you are i'm like oh my god seriously they actually aired it they put me up against like star wars fans <laughs> lord of the rings fans they were like who wins out of all of these and i won you were crowned red carpet's craziest fan so what has been the reaction since then when you go to mariah events do people come up to you after that like when we would be at jay leno or any other local la appearance where she was at and we'd be in line i'd have you know a bunch of lamps oh my god we love you can we take a picture with you? And I'm like, sure. I was just doing what we all would have done if we were there. One time at the e equals MC squared release party, my cousin's like, I couldn't find you. And then I turned around to look for you and that you were right there. And there was like six people in a line waiting to take a picture with you. I'm like, <laughs> it was a little intense. I used to be embarrassed when it first aired because they were like saying, you know, this she's crazy. But then I was like, you know what? No, I love it. I'm proud of it. It's, I'm going to own it because that was my moment. <laughs> Do you have any Jennifer Lopez fans come up to you and argued with you? I think they know better. Oh my God. <laughs> no. Well, I'm never really around Jennifer Lopez fans, you know, because I hang out with people who have good taste for the most part. <laughs> oh my God. I love your shadiness. <laughs> Did Mariah ever acknowledge seeing this clip? I never brought it up to her because she knows that JLo can't sing. So I'm not the type of fan or person to go out and toot my horn and be like, did you see this? Did you see that? What do you think? I'm just kind of like, you know, I know she saw it. She probably laughed. I know she did. I don't need her to congratulate me on anything. I saw the video of you in your backstage moment at Pepsi Smash and she obviously enjoyed you. I feel like we enjoy each other's company. Anything else you'd like to say about the moment behind me? I don't regret it. I think you expressed something that every huge lamb would love to say and do. Aww, That's why so many people you know, love it. That's what we need. Us lambs need to stick together and not tear each other down. During my time being a lamb, there was a group of girls that I would consider the mean girls. There's always been like lamb clicks and lamb drama. No, there's always been. And my thing's always been like, we're all here for the same reason. Like, why can't we all just get along? I've met so many good friends that I still keep in contact with it. I've met through Mariah. So not only has she given me some of the best music to my life soundtrack, but she's given me some of the best lifelong friends and relationships that I was able to form and still have. So 
for that, I'm really grateful. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about that. There are so many international lambs who have become friends and learn things about other cultures. It's a beautiful thing when you get to meet and share your memorabilia, share your experiences, share your story on why you like her and how you came to know her music. We all need to just come together. Celebrate what we have yeah, in just common, not our differences. And love each other even if we are different. There's got to be a way to connect this world today. You want to just finish up talking about your Pepsi Smash experience? I'll never forget this. May my mother rest in peace. You know, she passed away when I was 16. But I'll never forget the first time I told my mother, Mom, I really like Mariah. She's my favorite person. I'm going to be her number one fan. And, and one day I'm going to meet Mariah and I'm going to hug her and I'm going to get to tell her everything that I've always wanted to tell her. And my mom just looks at me and she's like, yeah, for sure. She goes, you can do that. You can do anything you want in life if you really believe it and you really set one foot in front of another and make it happen happen make yeah. it happen right so <laughs> that's what I was thinking in my head right now so I was like I'm gonna do it and sometimes she would laugh so I know that she was looking down on me when I finally met her all those times and she was that's like nice. yeah she was right so your backstage moment was it just like two minutes or so backstage oh no we hung out for hours we <laughs> They only aired that part, hung out, had some really good champagne. Dang, so good. And some really good wine. Did you get any gifts from that? Any merchandise? I got just a bunch of like emancipation stuff. So like tank tops, other types of CDs that they didn't sell in the store. I remember Mariah was happy that you said you liked the juicy remix of Dream Lover. I love it. At that time, Dream Lover was still one of my old school. Like I said, I would literally, whenever I saw a field, I was right there pretending that I was in that video, <laughs> doing that dance in the cornfield. Wearing my Pumas. I started collecting since I was like 12. I mean, you name it, I have it. Newspaper clippings, magazines, anything that I saw her in. DVDs and rare footage, interviews. I think you get her, yeah. I really like the Dream Lover remix. That's my favorite. You like that? That makes me cute. Yeah, but you, but you like the remix though? I was 11 and I bought Pumas like it. I was 11 when I heard it, so shut up. I'm like, hey. I'm telling you, you like Dream Lover, I, I was melting. Like, she liked the new I version. I gotta of get Dream that. Level. Like, are you I'm gonna glad put that you like this. It's the first time we've ever done it. You in have America. to put that out. That is hot. Like that <laughs> is H O double T hot. Well, that we like H like O double T. Yeah. Where is your signed charm bracelet album now? That is a very tragic story. That oh. was actually stolen from me. Oh. <sighs> But it's okay. I'm going to get her to sign it again. It was really nice because she wrote to Ruthie and she wrote love, love, love three times, Mariah. And I've never seen her sign anything like that. Have you ever met her in person? Like hung out with her? Or yeah, like six times. Not you, hanging out, just real quick meet and greets. We got to hang out with her because she's freaking hilarious. I know. She's so funny. Like, People don't think she has a personality, but she seriously has like little jabs and funny little jokes. Like she really makes you laugh. Like she's a funny girl. The way she throws shade, I've totally taken notes my whole life. So oh like I love the way she throws shade. So like that's probably where I, I do pull my inspiration from that a lot. Back in the day, she would hold events, for instance, the bringing on the heartbreak video shoot because she needed a live audience instead of getting extras what she did was did like a cattle call to her lambs and of course we're gonna go do it for free right because yeah. i ended up making friends there with some of the people who work for her that was the first time i actually got to like talk to her hang out backstage everybody on her team was always so super super kind like and mariah too i hate the rumors that go around saying she's a diva because any experience I've ever had when I've met her in person, she has always been so kind and loving. Like, she reaches out to hug you first. Yeah, she you always know, goes above and beyond for the fans. She sat and listened to a whole entire story I told her at the Heartbreak video shoot. That's where I got that LP I'm holding in my hand, the charm bracelet. That's where I got her to sign that for me. One time when I was first telling her my name, my friend Kelly and I, it was really, really loud at the Bringing on the Heartbreak video shoot. I went up to her and I was like, do you remember me? And she's like, oh yeah, I do. I remember you from Muhammad's birthday party. And I was like, yes. Ali? Yes. She 
goes, I do. I remember you from Muhammad's party. And I was like, oh my gosh, you do? And she's like, but I never got your name. I like went up to kind of tell her, but she was on the stage sitting with her legs hanging down. And I, I put my hand on her knee and I'm like, I'm sorry, is that okay? Because her security guard was like, don't touch her, right? Yeah. And then she looked at her security guard and she's like, she's fine. I was like, okay, well, get down here so I can tell you what I'm trying to say. My name, I tried to say my name as loud as I could, but it was loud in there. I go, this is from me and my friend Kelly. So she's like, oh, okay, what's your name again? Say it one more time. And so I said, Ruthie, but she heard Dorothy. Oh my God. And for Kelly, she heard Jenny, right? Oh. It's like we were playing telephone. <laughs> so I was like, no. So then I corrected her, right? And then she goes, oh, Ruthie, she's already laughing. She's like, I'm so sorry. And so now Kelly and I call each other Jenny and Dorothy. <laughs> That's kind of like our inside joke between us. My advice to any lamb, new lamb or whatever, who has those types of desires, wants to you know, meet her, is not be shy. And this was so interesting to me. And that's why I wanted to do it, because I think a lot of other lambs will finally be happy to hear your behind the scenes take on your legendary moment. Thank you so much for doing this. No, I appreciate you for doing this. You've been a lamb longer than myself. So kudos to that. Thank you. No problem. You're like we... Benjamin Button. You know what? You and Chris Buckle are like Benjamin Button. <laughs> you guys are aging backwards. It was so nice to meet you. I know. You too. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Tom. Bye-bye.